When Starship Flight 11 officially came to an end, it also marked the close of SpaceX's brief 10-month era of the version 2 Starship. Though this phase was short, it provided SpaceX with all the crucial data they needed to move on to something far more advanced, Starship version 3. According to Elon Musk, this next-generation vehicle could soon be used for experimental missions to Mars, possibly as early as next year. So, how exactly is Starship V3 engineered to make that possible? Let's find out in today's episode of Alpha Tech. After Starship Flight 11, the final launch of the year, there's no sign of rest at Starbase. Instead, workers are pushing full throttle, tackling a massive list of upgrades and construction projects, all aimed at preparing for what could be a breakthrough year for the Starship program. At the production site, just beside the megabays, SpaceX has begun vertical construction on the new Gigabay, the largest building ever built at Starbase, designed to boost and streamline Starship manufacturing at an even greater scale. A few kilometers away, over at the launch pad, crews are taking apart pad A piece by piece. The chopsticks on the launch tower are being dismantled, the OLM's foundation is being removed, and even the fuel lines and blast berm are being torn down. The tank farm and other support systems are also expected to be replaced, part of a full-scale reconstruction, to make the entire site ready for Starship version 3. Speaking of that new version, on October 21st, observers spotted the nose cone of Ship 39 being lifted and aligned for stacking onto its forward dome section. This marks the first Starship V3 currently under construction. Still, Ship 39 has a long way to go. Structural welding, hardware, and plumbing installation interior outfitting, completing the heat shield, and, of course, cryogenic testing and static fire trials. Realistically, two months won't be enough, especially for the first vehicle of this new generation. But that's fine, because SpaceX is taking things slow on purpose to overhaul Massey's site, the launch complex, and the production line, all in preparation for something big next year. And what exactly is that breakthrough? In 2026, SpaceX plans to achieve several firsts, the first orbital flight of Starship V3, the first in-orbit refueling test, the first Mechazilla catch of an upper stage, and potentially, the first uncrewed mission to Mars. These aren't rumors, they come directly from Elon Musk, who wrote on X, V3 can get to Mars and might, but V4 is more likely. That statement aligns perfectly with SpaceX's current schedule. Starship Volv3 is expected to debut later this year, with the first test flight set for 2026. Musk also confirmed to space journalist Eric Berger that SpaceX will do orbital refilling several times next year with Starship V3. Once SpaceX masters orbital refueling, it will likely send an uncrewed Starship to Mars to push the vehicle's limits and gather critical data for future crewed missions. But the question everyone's asking now is this. What kind of upgrades has SpaceX built into this version that make it capable of handling so many critical missions, including, potentially, a mission to Mars? Of course, the answer is, a lot. Compared to version 2, which saw five dramatic test flights in 2025, with only the last two succeeding thanks to major heat protection and reusability improvements, version 3 introduces a full-scale redesign. The entire vehicle is now taller, standing about 124.4 meters, up from 123.1 meters, with a slightly lengthened Starship and a 1.3 meter taller, super heavy booster to accommodate much larger propellant tanks. Starting with the booster, SpaceX has pushed it to the absolute limit, fitting 33 upgraded Raptor 3 engines, each generating around 280 tons of thrust up from 230 in the original and 250 in Raptor 2. That's an enormous leap, 95 tons more than the first version and 50 more than the second. Combined, they deliver a theoretical 8,240 tons of thrust, though SpaceX's goal is a full 10,000 tons at liftoff. For perspective, that's over twice the power of the Saturn V, making this the most powerful rocket stage ever built. And that power isn't just for any competition, it allows Starship to reach higher orbits faster, carrying more fuel in the upper stage for orbital refilling. In turn, that reduces the number of refueling flights needed for deep space missions, like those to the Moon or Mars. We're talking about up to 3,650 tons of fuel and oxidizer in the Super Heavy, 
plus 1,600 tons in the upper stage, a total of 5,250 tons of propellant per launch. That's a big leap from the 4,750 tons used in version 2. The extra fuel is needed to feed those powerful Raptor 3 engines, maintaining full thrust throughout the entire boost phase, which lasts several minutes. This also allows all 33 engines to run at maximum power, giving the rocket more lift, longer burn time, and greater payload capacity, even for the most ambitious deep space missions. To make room for all the extra propellant, SpaceX extended the booster itself. Version 2 stood around 71 meters tall, while version 3 measures 72.3 meters. Inside, the new design features a massive transfer tube that carries liquid methane from the top of the booster down to the engine bay. To give you an idea of scale, that single tube is almost as large as an entire Falcon 9 stage. Interestingly, even though the rocket is taller, the diameter remains unchanged at 9 meters, consistent with all Starship boosters so far. Another major internal change inside the booster lies in the liquid methane tank, which now features additional internal reinforcement. In the previous generation, the tank had over 70 internal stringers. Those are metal support beams attached to the tank wall to improve structural integrity. But in the new booster, SpaceX increased that number to 96 stringers, providing extra rigidity to handle higher pressure and dynamic loads during ascent. The reasoning seems clear. By adding more internal supports, SpaceX could eliminate the external reinforcement rings near the top of the tank, freeing up room for the new integrated hot staging ring. The new booster structure is also more modular. It now consists of three stacked barrel sections, internal stringers, a segmented dome, trusses, and a top structural ring. This upper dome isn't just the hot staging interface, it's also the top of the methane tank itself. Everything below that dome belongs to the methane tank, including, interestingly, the grid fins. That presented a new engineering challenge. To prevent the super cold methane from freezing or damaging the grid fin mechanisms, SpaceX designed a sealed enclosure around them, isolating the fins from the cryogenic propellant. It's a smart solution and one we haven't seen before. On earlier boosters, the grid fins were mounted above the tank dome and never risk contact with cryogenic fluids. By enclosing the fin actuators, SpaceX also eliminated the need for complex rotary seals, reducing failure points and simplifying maintenance. Now, as for the upper stage, or the ship, SpaceX has optimized its internal layout to increase fuel capacity from 1,500 to 1,600 tons, without changing the vehicle's height or diameter. That extra capacity makes all the difference. With full tanks in low Earth orbit, a refueled Starship could have just enough propellant to reach Mars. Roughly 1,200 tons of that would be consumed for the key engine burns. The trans-Mars injection, mid-course corrections, and the controlled descent onto the Martian surface. By the time Starship begins re-entry, it would still have 300 to 400 tons of fuel left, enough to land a 100-ton payload safely and even reserve propellant for a future ascent from Mars. So, while it's only a 100-ton increase in total fuel, that small improvement provides the energy needed for complex maneuvers, precision landings, and ultimately lays the foundation for SpaceX's first uncrewed Mars missions, targeted for 2026. Of course, to survive re-entry, SpaceX has also upgraded Starship's heat shield for version 3. Re-entry is one of the most dangerous phases of any mission when the vehicle slams back into the atmosphere of Earth or Mars, facing extreme heat and atmospheric drag. That's where the Thermal Protection System, or TPS, comes into play. For future versions, SpaceX is reportedly experimenting with a multi-layer heat shield design. This could include a white felt insulation layer combined with a black ablative membrane beneath the ceramic tiles. If a tile falls off, that black membrane acts as a sacrificial layer, burning away to absorb the heat, while the white insulation underneath helps keep the underlying structure cool. This layer design also seals the tiny gaps between tiles, reducing heat leakage and preventing tiles from loosening or cracking during re-entry. It's a subtle but crucial change that could make the next generation Starship far more durable for repeated deep space missions. Next up is a major upgrade that almost everyone's been waiting for, the new orbital refueling system. This focuses on the upgraded docking adapter located near Starship's payload bay. It's now equipped with precision alignment ports, 
dedicated transfer valves and low temperature resistant plumbing to handle cryogenic propellant. Compared to version 2, which only had early prototypes used mainly for testing heat shields and aerodynamics, Starship V3 introduces a fully functional two-way docking mechanism. That means both the tanker and the receiver can connect autonomously in microgravity, using LiDAR sensors and advanced avionics to align within just a few centimeters. The system also includes cryogenic pumps and insulated transfer lines, capable of moving 150 to 200 tons of propellant per session, fast enough to minimize losses from boil-off. According to SpaceX's plan, a Mars mission will require about four to six refueling flights in low Earth orbit to fully fill the upper stage's 1,200-ton propellant load. That puts enormous importance on the reliability of this docking adapter. It has to perform flawlessly under high pressure and extreme temperature swings. The reason this system matters so much is simple. It solves the energy problem. Starship can't possibly lift all 1,600 tons of fuel from the ground in one go. But with orbital refueling, it can reach escape velocity 11.2 kilometers per second from LEO and carry out key maneuvers like trans-Mars injection and a controlled landing on Mars. Without this system, a crewed Mars mission would be impossible. But with Starship VU-3, it's finally within reach. And 2026 could be the year SpaceX makes history again. So, if you haven't already, make sure to subscribe to Alpha Tech. We'll be right here following every milestone on SpaceX's path to Mars. Beyond all the big upgrades for Mars missions, SpaceX has also made a few smaller, but still meaningful changes. Starting with the Super Heavy Booster, one of the key improvements lies in its redesigned grid fins, now larger, stronger, and more aerodynamically efficient. The number of fins has been reduced from four to three, arranged in a T-shaped configuration around the vehicle. This new layout not only improves control during descent, but also lines up perfectly with the catch arms on the launch tower, allowing smoother, more precise recoveries.